Okay guys, so I apologize for the nasally voice. I got some allergy stuffy head tonight, but um this little this video is, is gonna be probably a little bit long and it's gonna cover both our respiratory system and our circulatory system. Also your blood vessels and things. Respiratory system, very simple, very straightforward, very easy. <clears throat> circulatory system, not so much. So um from the abdominal cavity that we just finished we're going to move anteriorly, so toward the head, um, to the thoracic cavity, so the chest. And the thoracic cavity is actually three different sections. It's um, a central or a middle uh, pericardial cavity, which is the area that surrounds the heart and the major blood vessels. And then two pleural cavities, one on each side, and the pleural cavity contains your lungs. Um, I assume you guys can all remember Mr. Bloomer. I just always thought he looked like Charlie Brown, so I, I made him part of this slide. Okay, so just like in digestion, uh, respiration will begin in the oral cavity and nasal cavity. Um, your throat is technically called your pharynx. So you might remember pharyngeal when we talked about sore throats and things. Um, this is uh, the pharynx is actually common to both the digestive and respiratory systems. If you think about um, your throat, it's connected to both your your nasal area and your um, your oral cavity. So the nasopharynx uh, lies just above the uh, hard and soft palate up here. Um, and connects your nasal cavity and it also connects your ears which is why if you have like a sinus infection your face can hurt, your nose can hurt, your throat can hurt, and your ears can hurt. Um, the nasopharynx is a passageway for air and then the uh, pharynx in general uh, including the oropharynx um, is also a passageway for, for food but primarily we think air when we talk about this. The larynx is just uh, posterior to your pharynx, so just after your pharynx, um, and this is involved then in the respiratory system only, so this is no longer part of your digestive system. Uh, this is oftentimes kind of generically called the voice box, and inside the larynx you will find the vocal cords. Um, we call this a voice box because the outer structure of the larynx is sort of a, a cartilage box, and um, um, this is the Adam's apple in a male. Now, you guys also have a larynx, and it does cause a slight protrusion uh, in the front of your neck, um, but it's usually not as accentuated as it is in males. Now, just past the larynx is going to be your trachea, which you might remember hearing about during histology. This is your windpipe. Um, this is a tube that um, allows air flow um, down to uh, the lung area. This um, is a tube that has cart rings or cartilaginous rings along its length like you see kind of pictured here that help keep this tube open so whereas the esophagus is always closed the uh, trachea we want to stay open at all times so that your airway remains open at the end of the trachea uh, it will divide into two tubes called bronchi or the singular for this is bronchus um, each of these will then extend into one of those pleural cavities and branch out into the lungs. Now, uh, the bronchi start as cartilage ringed tubes just like the trachea, but then it becomes smaller and smaller pathways and that cartilage goes away, so it just becomes soft tissue. At the end of the bronchi will be the lungs. Um, each bronchus branches into smaller tubes called bronchioles, and then those bronchioles will branch or terminate as millions of air sacs called alveoli. Now you guys are not going to see alveoli in your specimen, um, and you're really probably not going to see the bronchi real well either. You'll definitely see the trachea, and you'll definitely find the lungs. Um, um, but then as it branches smaller, it gets really tiny to where alveoli are really microscopic. Um, now it is these millions of alveoli that make up your lung. Um, and so a lot of times we, as when we're younger, we kind of learn the lung is like a bag that you breathe in. Uh, it's, it's really not. It's like millions of little bags. So um, it really has more of a sponge type um, texture to it um, um, where all those little bags can fill up at a, at a tiny microscopic level with air. That's going to um, allow, having all those tiny bags, a huge surface area of interaction between 
the blood flow that comes into the lungs and um, the air there so that you can transfer oxygen into the bloodstream and carbon dioxide out of the bloodstream. Now, the uh, really the last part of your respiratory system is your diaphragm. Um, and the diaphragm is a really thin layer of muscle. Uh, this is technically skeletal muscle, so it is voluntary, right? You can hold your breath. You can control your diaphragm. You don't have to think about this, fortunately, so you don't have to think about breathing all day long. But if you want to think about it, you can, and you can um, hold your breath or, or inhale or exhale. Um, the diaphragm is also really the line that separates the thorax or chest from the abdomen um, or kind of gut area. Now when the diaphragm flexes, it pulls down away from the lungs and allows them to inflate. And when it relaxes, it goes back up toward the lungs, putting a little bit of pressure on the lungs and helping you to exhale. I'm sorry if you hear Samson's uh, jingling in the background here with his with his tags. Also this picture is showing you a bronchial and then these alveoli. And like we said those are little um, microscopic bags basically where you can get oxygen in and you can get that exchange of, uh, of oxygen and carbon dioxide with the bloodstream. Okay so here is the circulatory system. As I said this is a a bit complicated and this oftentimes is really challenging in the dissection as well. Um, you know, the first day or two is challenging to kind of get your bearings with your mink. And then this last part, the circulatory system, is probably the hardest thing to, to clarify inside there. Um, this can be tricky, but this can also be kind of fun uh, and rewarding as you do it. Um, and, and, you know, the one thing to remember is so far we've, we've probably destroyed some blood vessels that we're going to be looking for. So if that's the case, we'll look for kind of the, the ends of them or whatever we can find. Um, inside the mink there and, and do our best uh, to figure them out still. Um, the heart will be easy to find in the major blood vessels we can find, but the smaller ones might be more of a challenge. Um, and I bet you guys never knew that I was actually in Twilight as, a, as an extra in the background. Now, we'll start with the heart. Um, the heart is the anchor of your circulatory system. It's a muscular pump that pushes your blood through your, your uh, body. Uh, it's found within a protective sac called the pericardium, um, which is uh, really easy to see in your dissection. Um, and it's a really it's a tough tissue pouch that kind of surrounds the heart. Um, so you might even not realize that it's there, but once we, we uh, kind of rip it open, it'll be real clear um, um, that it was wrapping it up. Now the heart has four chambers. It has two atria um, that we see uh, basically at the top of the heart. Um, a right and left atrium, and then two ventricles that we see as sort of the lower half of the heart. Um, uh, the thing that you have to remember um, for the, the circulatory system is that blood is carried away from the heart by arteries, and blood is returned to the heart by veins. And that's always true. Um, a lot of times uh, people like to think of the arteries and veins as carrying blood with oxygen or blood without oxygen, but that doesn't always hold true for every single one of them. This does. Okay, so blood carried away from the heart, it's easy to remember because of the A, right, by arteries, blood carried back to or returned to the heart by veins. Now, blood enters the heart via the atria, so it comes in basically at the top of the heart. Um, so I'll draw this here, this is terrible. Um, but blood comes in through the top of the heart, passes through the ventricles, and leaves the heart through the ventricles to go out to the body. Um, there's valves that separate each atrium from each ventricle, and um, there are, are valves that, uh, as you move um, sometimes into the heart and out of the heart as well. Uh, the other big thing to really remember about the heart is that the heart is divided into two halves. Okay, so your heart has a right side and a left side. And the right hand circulation should never mix with the left hand circulation. Uh, basically, once you are born, your heart should be a right side and left side. And those two blood streams basically should be separate at all times. So you've got a right atrium and ventricle that are connected to each other. And you have a left atrium and ventricle. Um, that are connected to each other. 
So here's what the heart really looks like. Um, it's real, real pleasant looking. Um, and here are some mink hearts. Get it? So the right side of your heart is responsible for what we call the pulmonary circuit. And pulmonary means lung. So the right side of your heart is responsible for sending blood to your lungs. Um, blood that has returned to the heart, drained of oxygen, will need to be sent back to the lungs to pick up more oxygen. So it will enter the right atrium, pass to the right ventricle, and then get pumped to the lungs to get oxygenated, or pick up more oxygen. The left side of your heart is responsible for what we call the systemic circuit. So it sends blood to the rest of your body. Blood that is rich in oxygen, so it is returning from the lungs full of oxygen, enters the left atrium, passes to the left ventricle, and gets pumped to the rest of the body. And that's the way your heart cycles when it pumps. Um, this is really important, knowing the way blood moves through your heart. Now, here is how I survived college, physiology, and medical school, is thinking of the heart not like the weird, twisted shape that it is, but thinking of the heart like a diamond that has two halves to it. Um, and so then you can think of the pathway in a very simplistic uh, drawing like this one. I know it's not that simple, but um, rather than trying to learn it on a weird, convoluted drawing of an actual heart. Um, these vessels we're about to learn, but we have the names here um, for us too. So the right side, remember, is the pulmonary side. So this is the, the lung side. Um, uh, blood is going to return to the right atrium from the body via something called the vena cava. Um, then it's going to pass um, from right atrium to right ventricle. Then it'll be pushed out the right ventricle via something called the pulmonary artery to the lungs. And again, remember, veins bring blood back to the heart. Arteries take blood away from the heart. So, after we go to the lungs, right, blood goes to the lungs, gets its oxygen, um, then it's going to come back from the lungs, right, to this left side. Remember, the left side is systemic, so this is going to go out to the body. So, the pulmonary vein brings the blood back to the left side of the heart, moves from atrium to ventricle, and the left ventricle sends that blood out the major artery called the aorta, there's that A again, to the rest of your body. So, when we look at the heart, um, as you just saw on the last slide then, we do have four major vessels that enter or leave the heart. Um, the aorta, seen here, this big red one on top, uh, is going to carry blood away from the heart to the body. The vena cava, which has a superior or upper part right here and an inferior or lower part right here um, is your primary vein that brings blood back from the body. Pulmonary artery, again pulmonary meaning lung, right, um, is going to, uh, pulmonary artery is going to carry blood uh, away from the heart to the lungs and pulmonary vein is going to bring blood um, from actually both sides here um, from the lungs back to the heart. Give you a second to read that and just saying. Now we want to look at all your blood vessels. Um, realize there are tons of blood vessels. We're, um, I promise we're really not learning that many of the vessels that are in the body. We're just focusing on the major ones but it's still going to feel like a ton. Um, it's easier to start with the venous system and then come back and talk about the arteries or arterial system after that. Um, so all of these vessels are veins. They're going to return blood to the heart. So veins are going to take blood back to the heart. Um, uh, now we talk about the veins first because most of the veins are ventral to the arteries or more superficial, so it's going to be easier to see them. And I'll try to use the color here blue because these vessels are going to be blue in your mink because we fill them with blue latex. Okay, In real life, 
all your blood vessels are kind of pinkish inside there. I know they can kind of look blue from the outside of your body, but that's because you're looking through your skin. Um, realistically, veins and arteries are both just kind of pinkish in color inside your body. Now, you've got hundreds of veins, and what's cool about veins is they can be different in all of us. So if you just look at your arms, um, and you hold them down to your sides, you'll see some veins maybe pop out of your skin. Um, those are probably not the same exact pattern as uh, one of your friends. And so veins, although they roughly are the same in everybody, can carry a, a kind of a different pattern. Now, even though these veins are returning to the heart, the easiest way to describe them is to start from the heart. So recognize veins are bringing blood back to the heart, but we're going to start there and, and go out in terms of trying to identify these. This is going to be confusing, I promise. Um, not that that's a good thing, but it will. Um, the easiest way to learn these is to see them, and so that's what we'll be doing here. Um, and the class days coming up is trying to see all these inside your, your mink. So, start with the pulmonary vein. The pulmonary vein is the big vein that brings blood from the lungs back to the heart. And this is kind of cool. This is the only vein in the whole body that does carry oxygenated blood. So usually veins are coming back to the heart from the other parts of your body. That blood has dropped off its oxygen, and it's coming back to the heart so it can get more. The only exception is the pulmonary vein, which is coming back from the lungs where it gets oxygen. So this blood will be filled with oxygen. Um, and this pulmonary vein will enter the uh, left side of your heart. Now, the vena cava is the major vein that brings blood back from the rest of your body. So it will enter your right atrium, the right side of your heart, and it will be carrying this deoxygenated blood that, that needs more oxygen. The vena cava comes in two divisions. The superior vena cava, think like upper or higher, right? It carries blood from the upper body back to the heart. So if you're above the heart in the body, that's the superior vena cava. Below the heart is the inferior vena cava. So it will bring blood back from your lower body. So here's a picture of a human here on the left with the major veins um, highlighted and then here's a picture of your mink from your lab book with just those highlighted that we're going to talk about now you'll also be happy to find that you don't have to find all of them in your mink even um, but they're the ones that we're gonna that we're gonna mention and highlight here what we've seen so far um, those uh, pulmonary vessels uh, but then more primarily this right here circling in black, would be the uh, vena cava. And again, superior above the heart, inferior below the heart. Uh, here is where the heart would be located, uh, but the heart is gone in this picture. So this is where the heart should be. Um, and so you see here we've got uh, superior vena cava above the heart and inferior vena cava below the heart. And that's this whole piece right here. Okay, and this goes all the way down. That would be vena cava. Okay, now, superior vena cava branches that you will find, um, and you can see in that previous picture, um, are, are going to branch out. We're going to talk about them again, moving away from the heart. Uh, but remember, these are all bringing blood back to the heart. Uh, the brachiocephalic complex. Uh, brachio means arm and cephalic means neck. Okay, so this, you've got a left and a right brachiocephalic complex. This is going to be found in the lower neck, kind of around the shoulder and armpit and lower neck area. Um, these vessels will drain blood from the head and the arms um, to then join into the vena cava. Uh, the subclavian vein, right below sub the clavicle, so below the collarbone, this is the biggest vein that drains um, each arm into the vena cava. Uh, the brachial vein, uh, again left and right, brachial means arm. So this is a more distal extension of the subclavian out near your arm. Uh, and then the external and internal jugular veins, both left and right, are the big veins that drain the head into the vena cava. Um, um, external jugular is kind of the biggest one. Internal jugular, as you'd think, as you'd assume, is a little more internal. It's a little deeper. 
um, and it is the uh, secondary vein for draining the head. It's very possible that they ripped off the external jugular when they ripped off the uh, skin and fur of the mink, um, but hopefully we can, we can kind of find one or the other of these. Now what you also want to realize is that these vessels are like streets in Louisville. They will change names along their length. Right, so when we're out in the arm, we might call it a brachial vein. Then as we get closer to your, your uh, collarbone area and your neck area, that'll turn into the um, subclavian vein and so on and so forth. So you can check out that picture on the last slide to kind of uh, analyze that. Now the inferior vena cava branches that we look for, um, a, little, a little easier I think than the superior vena cava. The renal veins, renal means kidney, uh, these are veins that will um, drain each of your kidneys, so they're very large and, and should be pretty easy to find, hopefully they will be blue coming out of the kidneys. The iliolumbar veins are veins that drain your pelvic area, um, uh, so think like lumbar vertebrae on the back, it's kind of the area we're in. Um, these are... Um, going to uh, um, drain uh, your legs uh, back into the inferior vena cava to go up to your heart. And then we have what are called the common iliac veins, which will um, join at the pelvis to form the kind of end of the inferior vena cava, and these come from each leg. So at the point where a big vein from each leg becomes one to go up to your heart, those would be the common iliac veins. And you can find these, uh, look at these on the picture a couple slides back as well. Okay, now your arterial system um, has pink latex injected into the arteries, so they should um, look more pink and easier to find. Uh, arteries are usually a little thicker and tougher than veins, um, so they're kind of more muscular vessels, um, so they might stand out to you a little bit more as well. Um, and the best way to talk about arteries is to start from the heart and move out, just like we did with the veins. Except this time, remember too, that the blood flow is out away from the heart as well. So as these branch, they are just taking blood to different tissues. Uh, your pulmonary artery, again pulmonary meaning lung, uh, carries blood to your lungs uh, from your heart. So this is the only artery that carries deoxygenated blood. So pulmonary vein is the only vein that is bringing blood back from the lungs with oxygen. This is the only artery, so this is the only vessel that leaves the heart without blood that is high in oxygen. Um, and that's because this one is going to the lungs to pick up more oxygen um, there. Now the rest of your, your vessels, starting with your aorta, which leaves the left ventricle, um, will go out to the body and carry oxygenated blood to the tissues of your body. Now the aorta is kind of weird. Um, again, I'm going to draw a, a bad heart picture here. Um, the aorta leaves the heart anteriorly. So the aorta comes out of the heart, out of the top of the heart, then curves to the left. So think of this picture like you're looking at the person face, um, face on. Curves to their left and then curls back behind the heart to move posteriorly down through your abdomen. So we're going to kind of lift your heart up in your mink see where this guy comes out, and then watch it go downward throughout the body. This can be a little tough, um, because this area right here can have a lot of connective tissue and fat that kind of gets in the way, so we'll, we'll try to pick through that. Now, this upper portion, where, um, here in black now, the uh, aorta arches is exactly called that. It's called the aortic arch. So it's the part kind of sitting above your heart. And then the descending aorta is this lower part that descends through your body. And so depending on where it is located at the, at the moment you look at it, it can have a different name. So it's called the thoracic aorta when it's up here in the thorax, and then it's called the abdominal aorta when it's in the abdomen. So if you see it by the stomach, that's the abdominal aorta. If you see it near your, um, you know, upstairs, up, up above the uh, diaphragm still, we would call it thoracic but this is gonna take blood to your lower body. So here we are again, picture of a human. Um, this is what the aorta would look like with the heart removed, right? So the heart is like sitting right here, um, and the aorta comes out and then moves behind it, um, and that's gonna be right there in your chest. You see the major branches of the aorta and the arteries coming out there. 
Uh, and then here's our, our mink picture again. Again, the, the heart would kind of be right here. Say aorta comes out. Um, and then notice here, so uh, kind of the northbound lanes, you've got um, a difference in one side and the other. So whereas the veins are all symmetrical, left and right, um, it's a little bit different uh, in your arteries. Uh, here you see uh, this, this left-hand vessel we're about to talk about, the left subclavian. Uh, it comes out, moves up, and, and goes into the arm. The right vessel that comes out is called the innominate. Um, and it comes up, then turns into the right subclavian, gives branches into the um, arms. But it also gives branches to your head. So most of your blood that goes to your head actually comes from this right side and not symmetrically from right and left. And then as you see, we'll learn some of this as we, as we move uh, down to that, that are kind of just like the veins. So the way we talk about the arteries is we you talk about, okay, which one comes off the aorta first, which one comes off the aorta second. Um, as you can see in this picture, the innominate artery is the first artery that comes off of that aortic arch. And it's going to travel up in the neck, anterior in the neck, where it will branch into a couple different things. First thing it's going to branch into are your carotid arteries, which are the ones where if you get cut in the neck, you're going to bleed out really fast. Um, these carotid arteries carry a, a lot of the blood flow um, up to the head, and they're going to be left and right. Then the innominate also branches into the right subclavian, um, again, um, under the clavicle, right? so under your collarbone, um, which are going to move out into your right arm. Uh, as it moves into the right arm, again, it's going to change names like a street in Louisville. So it will become the axillary artery, or right axillary artery, in your armpit. Right? That's what your axilla is, is your armpit. And then as it um, continues out, it will become the right brachial artery. Again, brachial meaning arm. So we've got right subclavian under the clavicle. Then it's called right axillary as it's in your armpit. And then it's called right uh, brachial as it gets out into your arm. The left side is different, right? The second branch off of the aortic arch is called the left subclavian. So there's no innominate artery on the left. And that's because there's also no um, carotid arteries um, that stem from this side. So the left subclavian branches off the aorta. Uh, we call it the subclavian while it's kind of behind your clavicle or behind your collarbone. It will then turn into the left axillary, and then it will become the left brachial. So just like your right arm, same way as we move out in the different um, areas of the arm, we change its name based on where it's located. Now... Um, the vertebral arteries or vertebral arteries are also important. Um, these branch off of the right and left subclavian around your neckline, and they carry blood to your brain as well. And so your carotid arteries are really important. Um, they really bring blood more to your face and muscles of your head. And the vertebral arteries or vertebral arteries, they actually move through some of your vertebrae, so they're protected better deeper in your neck, and they will carry blood to your brain. Okay, last one. I know this is overwhelming. Um, but the last thing we need to look at is the descending aorta and what branches off of it down around your legs and your lower body. Um, this is going to carry all the blood to your um, lower body. Uh, there's a ton of small vessels here that we won't identify. Many of these vessels are going to go to your digestive organs, right? so your liver, uh, your stomach, and intestines. We don't have to worry about any of those because we're going we're gonna to rip those out with the organs. Uh, you'll notice a lot of them because you'll see that stretchy latex in there, but you don't have to identify these. What you do have to identify is sort of the ones that mirror the veins. So you're going to have renal arteries. Uh, these carry blood directly to each kidney. So these are going to be large pink vessels on the left and right sides going into the kidneys. Uh, then in the pelvic region, uh, your uh, descending aorta, your aorta is going to branch, right? It's going to fork into two. When it does that, we call those the external iliac arteries. Um, external iliac generally meaning like uh, in that pelvic area. So aorta comes down, branches into two um, external iliac arteries. One goes to each leg. 
and then the femoral artery is the same vessel as it gets down into your leg. Um, now the femoral artery is the major artery of the leg. If you kind of separate or pull apart the thigh muscles, you're going to find that femoral artery there in the leg. Uh, it's quite large, has a ton of blood flow. So a, um, a cut to your groin or thigh area that's deep, um, or any kind of injury that would be a deep like puncture, can be uh, very life-threatening. You can bleed very, very quickly out of the femoral artery, named because it's right next to your femur. Uh, so that takes care of it, circulatory system, respiratory system. I know this one is daunting, uh, but as I said, we'll walk through it in the mink, and I think it'll, it'll make sense to you once we start to see these structures inside there. Thanks for listening. See you in class.